today is uh, oh, what would be today be Thursday, the 29th. <laughs> Good to be with you. And we're going to conclude our parables of Matthew. So we're still in the Gospel of Matthew and the end of chapter 25, starting at verse 31. This is again another kingdom parable. And again, Jesus is talking about his return, his second return, his second advent, his second coming. So I'll read the parable and then we'll talk a little bit about it. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, and take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? Then the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you, and you did not look after me. They will also say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, uh, he will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Hmm. This is a tough one, isn't it? Not to understand, mind you, but perhaps to live out. The parable is very straightforward. There are two groups of people here at the second coming of Christ. The first group, the sheep, are the ones who are faithful to Christ Jesus, not just by their profession, their lips, but in their actions. And they're faithful to Christ Jesus by taking care of Christ Jesus. And did you hear what Jesus meant by that? Simply, those who are brothers and sisters of his. Uh, we get a little mixed up here who, in considering who these brothers and sisters are, but I think quite clearly these are others who are in Christ Jesus. Remember when Jesus' family comes to him and uh, at Peter's mother's house, and one of the disciples says, hey, Jesus, your family's outside and they're looking for you. And Jesus says, who is my family? Uh, these are my brothers. This is my mother. These, are, This is my sister. So I think Jesus means those who are in Christ Jesus, not just anybody, although arguably we're to take care of all of the world. But in particular, Jesus is talking about how we treat each other in the church. And even if there is a broader ap application to this parable, I mean, I would go with that. <laughs> we, we ought to think maybe more particularly about how we treat each other in the church. Do we take care of each other when we're in need? When one of us is without clothes, do we make sure that, that the rest of the church steps up and clothes them? or? one without food or without water or one who has found themselves uh, sick and or in prison. Jesus said, 
that the world will know that we are his disciples by our love. And by that he meant, in particular, our love for each other, those of us who are all followers. There's another group of people here, those who who claim to know Jesus. Uh, these are the goats. And the problem here is, though, that though they may profess with their lips, they have not bowed in their actions to Christ Jesus. And so upon his return, the punishment, the judgment is harsh. Why? I think because they're proclaiming Christ and not living him. The Bible is really clear that those who take the name of Jesus are to follow him both by faith of word, proclamation, and faith of action, our doing. And so this is something to be mindful of. Are you, as you consider this parable, more like the sheep or more like the goat? You know, I, I've got to be honest and say that I've been a little bit frustrated <laughs> during the pandemic uh, with, with churches and pastors in particular who have disregarded the encouragement of our government, both federal and state, to love each other by wearing masks. You know, there have been not many, but few churches who have come out and said, well, no, we're not going to wear masks. We're not going to comply with social distancing. We're distancing. We're going to continue to do what we do because we have a right to it. And that by the amendments, uh, especially the First Amendment, that we have a right to uh, practice our faith, that uh, we will not comply and you can't interfere with us. And the problem I have with this at the foundational level is, what's the, what's the more loving thing to do in this situation? I mean, even if we individually or corporately believe that uh, wearing a mask is somehow not working <laughs> or acceptable, why wouldn't we wear a mask in case it works, A, and B, as an act of love to another? I've, I've thought often that during the pandemic, and I think this is where our heads need to be, about not what did Jesus do, because Jesus didn't live through a pandemic, but what, um, what would Jesus do in this situation? I can say with great certainty that Jesus would have been the first in my understanding of scripture and theology, to don a mask. Why? For the sake of the other. This is what it means to give our allegiance to Jesus in action. So I've been crying out within myself <laughs> at, at these uh, churches and Christians who are taking such a hard stance against good protocols to take care and love the other. And I say simply this, you can have your views and opinions. Everybody has a right to those. But please don't drag Jesus down with those views and opinions. That's what the goats and the sheep is all about. Are we doing the things that Jesus did? Are we doing the things that Jesus would do? Are we loving others and in so doing find ourselves in reality 
loving Jesus himself. We will be held accountable to how we treat those around us. So consider, contemplate. Are you the goat professing Christ with your lips, but not serving Christ with your actions? Or are you a sheep that professes both with your lips, proclaiming Jesus as Lord, and in your actions, loving the brothers and sisters of Christ? Who are you? Let us pray. God, help us not to be selfish, but selfless. Help us to give to our brothers and sisters who are in need to sacrifice ourselves for the other. Lord, we oftentimes don't even know how to do this well. And we certainly don't have the power and ability to do it within ourselves. So Holy Spirit, come empower us to live a life of love for the other. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's been great to be together. Uh, I hope I didn't make too many of you mad. <laughs> uh, those of you who may be on the other spectrum or come from a different position than I do on uh, wearing masks and uh, living according to our governments and uh, health director, uh, director's directions. Uh, but again, uh, live in a way that glorifies God, uh, both with your words and more importantly, with your actions. Until tomorrow, tomorrow is our last day in the parables. We're going to be in the Gospel of Luke and wrap up the last parable there. And then next week, we're going to be talking about what it looks like to love as we go through the book of First John together. And I'm really looking forward to that. I hope you are too. God bless you. Love you. Miss you. Hang in there, friends. Bye-bye.